Sometimes it does rain. And hard. This I always knew, but didn't really believe. Now, after my first weeks of perpetually cloudless sky, it seemed more improbable than ever. The soil was hard packed for all its sandiness and bone dry. The cactus and mesquite, standing defiantly under the sun, seemed to survive without moisture. The weatherman, I found myself thinking, must have an easy time here. If he could only content himself with saying, fair and warmer every day, he would be bound to statistically be right more often than satire credits him with being anywhere else. The fragments of puffy clouds which one day dotted the sky could not possibly mean anything. Two days later, when a few of them developed black bottoms, they couldn't mean anything either. And then, 24 hours after that, with the sun still pouring down upon me, I rubbed my eyes. 15 or 20 miles away, across a still burning desert, a dark veil was descending from a cloud on the mountainside. It could happen there, so why not here? Not to hold the reader in suspense, it did. In this lower Sonoran region, the average annual precipitation varies from 4 inches at Yuma to 11 at Tucson. That means approximately one-tenth to one-fourth of what southern New England gets, and it also means many, many more days of drying sunshine. The rain comes mostly during two brief periods, one in midsummer and the other in midwinter, and when it does come, it sometimes comes copiously. In some places, as much as one-third of the total annual fall has been known to come in half an hour. Though it's unusual, flooded streets in the city, impassable roads in the country, and such are normal and expected. A little later, on a trip south to the border, I was surprised by... To be, I was surprised to be stopped time and time again by raging, unavoidable, un unavoidable torrents, cutting straight across the unpaved road. Yet again, after half an hour, each had shrunk until it was no longer dangerous, and after an hour, it had disappeared, leaving only a belt of damp sand. These washes, or arroyos as they're called here, and in California, trap both the ignorant and those who have grown contemptuously familiar. That drowning should be one of the commonest fatal accidents in the desert is only another of the paradoxes here. Of course, such rains are much more common in the surrounding mountains than here on the lower desert plain. The vivid and accurate name which the meteorologists have for such deserts as this is rain shadow. <sighs> the mountains usually wringing the last drops of moisture from the air lifted up over the coldness of their summits cast an elongated shadow of dryness to the leeward, exactly like the similar, though shorter, shadow of sunlessness, now to one side and now to the other of their bases. The mountains I see all around me are themselves ordinarily in such a shadow cast by the high, still higher mountains behind them. What little moisture those higher mountains have failed to extract they usually take. What we get here is only what they, in their turn, have left. 
No wonder it's not much, or rather, not frequent. So limited in size are the few laden clouds which manage to survive the double ringing, that torrents may come down here, or in the city a few miles away, while no drop falls on the asphalt or on the sand, and as such the case may be. Permanent residents, weary as not yet I am, of brilliance and of dryness, grow bitter when they hear that a neighbor got a shower. It never hits where I live. But they are wrong. For a week, perhaps, I watch thunderclouds gather and come to nothing, or saw, a few miles away, the lazy unraveling of some patch of nimbus as its moisture dropped slowly to earth. Then one day, our turn came. The lightning moved closer. The thunder roared in our very ears. And finally, the huge drops beat down viciously, leaving little craters in the sand where they fell. That time there wasn't much, but five day li days later the promise was fulfilled. And I understand, stood for the first time, why the spinner of the ancient mariner tale took only one short, unadorned sentence to the most important event that occurred in the poem. And when I woke, it rained. This was the real thing. Here and there, on the uneven ground, little puddles collected and stayed there which soon returned, despite the sun which soon returned in full force, for nearly 48 hours, and with unbelievable promptitude, the desert responded. This is not, of course, the real season of bloom. Of that, I had never seen more than ta the tail end, which, in what, when a little red flame is still ascending from the ends of the ocotillos, and when here and there a few of the humble little plants will soon dry into, into, into invisibility are still a mass of brilliant colors. In general, the time of the July rain is when the plants would still have fruits to mature, finish them, and those which are haven't, which have not sunk into a kind of waiting which have not begin to sink into a kind of waiting slumber pears are reddening or purpling on the saguaro and prickly pear and dry twisted beans bean pods on the mesquite but there are a few things apparently which choose this rather than spring as the time to flower and a few which are stimulated into a second blooming Desert marigolds appear suddenly in yellow masses of color. White zinnias bloom almost overnight. In and on the flower floor between Choyas and Palo Verdes, I notice for the first time a three-lobed vine that I don't know, which has called my attention to itself, bursting out with large, irregular flowers whose yellow throats are delicately lined with purple. More surprisingly, the mesquite and creosote bush, for the second time this year, are in flower.